questions. So this time we'll show something different. So I hope this may interest you. And first, Dr. Zhao will present this case to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Zhao Ji Yi. Uh, before the Operation Living Broadcast, I would like to make a brief introduction about our patient first. This patient is a 73-year-old male whose chief complaint is a partial paroxysm chest pain for two years. This patient suffers from serious hypertension and diabetes, which are the main risk factors of his disease. His echocardiogram showed an injection fraction is 59% with significantly reduced movement of the in interior and posterior walls. Next, the electrocardiogram showed a sinus rhythm and the TVs inverted and the ST segment depression in V4 to V6 leads. Next, uh, this patient received a PCI for acute myocardial infarction five months ago. The prior coronary angiography showed that there was an acute occlusion in left circumflex artery with TME flows uh, grade zero. Next, there was a serious stenosis in the proximal LD with severe calcification. There was an obvious coronary artery fistular in the first uh, diagonal branch. Blood flowed into the left ventricle. We also found over 90% stenosis as well as severe calcification exists in the proximal tomato segment of the right uh, uh, coronary artery. After placing a geode balloon in the OM branch, we implanted a stand in LCS. Next, next. And the final result tend to be satisfactory. Next. Due to the epidemic, the patient's complete re re vascularization was delayed after his discharge. Next. Before the operation, we conduct a QFR examination on the patient. The QFR of LED was 0 0.65. Next. The, next. the QFR of RCA was 0 0.62. Next. Virtual stand uh, technique uh, uh, simulate the effect of the Next. dent implantation in select segments using predicted value of QFR. By using a QFR-based virtual standing technique, the QFR of RCA may be increased from 0 0.62 to 0 0.96. Next, uh, the QFR of LED may be increased increased from uh, 0 0.65 uh, to 0 0.95. It could have, have helped us to make a plan before the operation. And then, uh, next. And then we have performed a CTA on the patient. And the results showed that there was a, a serious stenosis with a severe calcification in the left main to the proximal LED and a diffuse stenosis within the lipid, lipid calcified clock in the proximal to middle segment of RCA. The stand in RCX had a good expansion. Next. In order to understand the coronary artery lesion deeply, the intelligent visualization system for CTA invited by Professor Li Yue in our hospital would help us to get more information. 
Please, uh, Professor Wang Dingyu, introduce this part. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Zhao. Uh, this is Wang Dingyu from the first affiliate hospital of Harbin Medical University. I will show you the audience the uh, intelligent viral system for coronary artery uh, angio uh, CT angiography. Uh, as we showed in the prior cases, the system has a uh, unique value for the complex uh, coronary artery disease, such as chronic total occlusion or the calcification layers. Uh, now we can see the aorta, the right coronary artery, and the left coronary artery. And uh, uh, now let's hide the aorta. We see there's uh, some calcification in the proximal and ostium of right coronary artery. Uh, uh, now we hide it and we see the uh, enlarge the uh, image and uh, rotate it. Uh, we can see there's heavy uh, calcified placards in the ostium and uh, proximal LCX and also in the uh, prox uh, proximal to mid LAD. Uh, we uh, hide the LCX and its calcified placards and the uh, excellent stent in the LCX. Now we rotate the uh, LAD uh, image freely and uh, we can see that there's almost a 270 degree calcified uh, placard around the LAD. It's, uh, the uh, rota or IVL may be a good choice for the Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Wang, and thank you, Dr. Zhao. Uh, I think this is a very interesting case. Uh, it's a motor vessel disease, there's severe stenosis in RCA, and intermediate to severe stenosis in proximal RAD with lots of calcification. And there's also a clear a fistula connecting the diagonal and to the left ventricle. So we did the virtual standing. It gave us some guidance how to put the stents. So Dr. Gong, do you agree with the virtual standing strategy? Or what's your thought on this patient? Um, okay. Uh, for the virtual standing uh, 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 technique of QFR, uh, we can say that uh, uh, if uh, uh, implanted two stent in the RCA middle segment, the QFR could significantly increase to the uh, about 0 0.92 and uh, in fact in for this patient uh, firstly we uh, complete the RCA PCI uh, we will show the procedure details Uh, just like we see, uh, I see the middle segment of RCA has diffuse uh, stenosis, and uh, and with with intravascular imaging guiding, we complete RCA leading PCI and uh, implanted two stent. You know, Dr. Gong, uh, from the angel, I think uh, we can see there's some calcification in the proximal RCA. And before you put the stand, actually, you did the intravascular imaging AVAS. So, uh, what did the AVAS tell us about the calcification in RCA? Is it severe? Uh, yes. Uh, intravascular uh, imaging tells us the morphology of intra a plaque, intracoronary plaque, and uh, about uh, the uh, the plaque distribution, and uh, uh, tell us how to pre-treatment the leading. Uh, in fact, uh, for this question, this is our uh, intravascular image, and uh, we can see. Uh, from the distal segment of RCA to the ostium of RCA, 
uh, the black is very diffuse and uh, uh, almost uh, af aphrobrotic black. And uh, in the proximal and uh, ostal RCA, uh, there are uh, larger calcifications. And uh, in some segments, the plaque is vulnerable. Uh, so it is designed to cover the proximal uh, lesion and the optimal lesion by stent. And uh, after full pretreatment with uh, cutting balloon, uh, we next used uh, NC balloon to fully get a fully pretreatment and uh, impl implanted to uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, stent and after uh, post dilatation uh, the final imaging showed the stent get uh, uh, well and uh, get good uh, opposition and uh, expansion and the uh, MSC is about uh, uh, 7.7 uh, and uh, we think the uh, student uh, implantation is very optimization. Yeah, so from the MS, I think you know, the mid, middle and the distal parts of RC uh, Okay, it, it doesn't have a lot of calcification, but it does have some calcification in the proximal RCA. And you pre-treated the lesion with NC balloon and cutting balloon. I think you know the result was very good because you get the stent well expanded. And then you run the Avas again after the standing. Can can you show us the Avas after PCA in the RC? Yes. Uh, let's see the run seven. The last run. Can you give me the last run? Uh, Dr. John, can I was you... run after PCI in RC. Yes, the last run is the final imaging result after stenting. Okay, you can see um, the stenting is good uh, expansion and a good uh, uh, position, but. Uh, if we carefully to, to, to look at uh, the imaging, we can see um, in, sub, in some segments, there are a little a plaque or tissue prolapse. Um, but uh, according to the um, contemporary criteria, uh, this prolapse uh, will not be treated uh, further. Okay, so no further treatments for RCA. And then I think you know, it will be fine with RCA, so your next time should be focused on the RED. So what's your strategy for the RED? Because you know there's a fistula connecting the first diagonal into the left ventricle. So what's your strategy? Yeah, uh, next uh, step, we are focused on LED leasing. And uh, according to the baseline KFFR result, uh, uh, we can see the KFR is about uh, uh, 0 0.62. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this patient, uh, we used a uh, uh, microcast-based FFR technique uh, to uh, re-evaluate the hemodynamic significance of LED leasing. And uh, our FFR result showed uh, uh, 0 0.65 mm -hmm. it's a very agreement and then so the LED leasing should be treated uh, with PCI because of the uh, significant effect on the hemodynamic uh, and uh, next we will perform intravascular imaging to guide our detailed procedure uh, of course uh, for this patient there are um, uh, multiple uh, coronary uh, fistula uh, for the coronary artery fistula 
uh, it's uh, if its effect are uh, I'm a uh, I'm a dynamic uh, is different and uh, this detail information we are uh, talk uh, talking uh, we're talking about uh, this detailed information mm -hmm. by Dr. Joff. Yeah, you know what, uh, Dr. Go, uh, I think you know, after the pressure micro capital FFR, we confirm the result of QFR, and this lesion in LED should be treated. Uh, actually, the pressure micro FFR is the new technique invented by Chinese company. So this is very new technique. I will talk to you about this uh, in details. And like as you mentioned, because there's a fistula that may have influence on the functional assessment. So Dr. Zhao, what's your thought on this? The fistula, do you think it may have a big influence on the FR results? Or it's okay, we, we don't have to care about that. Okay. Although most of the fistula are no symptom, myocardial ischemia uh, can be caused by the coronary steel phenomena. phenomena. Uh, a fistula seldom, seldom cause uh, symptom when a patient uh, in his childhood, childhood when the, a patient grew up uh, symptoms and complications may include just like uh, chest pain heart failure especially when a uh, fistula uh, rise uh, uh, size is very large uh, uh, when he is raised from the proximal side of the main uh, vessel, just like the proximal LED, uh, proximal RCA, uh, it may be lead uh, myocardial ischemia or lead uh, coronary steel phenomena. We must treat it. Uh, one uh, fistula. Uh, located at the end of the main vessel or the side vessel. Uh, it may uh, not uh, lead to steel phenomena or lead uh, myocardial ischemia. Uh, we will uh, lead uh, it alone. Whether the fistula is significant or not is the key point. For management, we can do a FFR check. If the FFR value is more than uh, zero point eight, it uh, may not lead to steel phenomena. We can lead it alone. Uh, when the FFR value is less uh, less than uh, zero. 0 0.75, uh, it may lead to uh, myocardial ischemia or a steel phenomena. We must uh, treat it just like uh, do a surgery or uh, close it, closing it. Yeah, you're right. I think, you know, whether or not the fistula have impact on the functional assessment, it depends on the location of the fistula and also where a gene is to, right? So right now, I think Dr. Gong has run the AVAS in LED, right? Yes, we yeah. just uh, so come Can you take us through the AVAS? Okay. Dr. Zhang, can you, can you show us the AVAS in result? Okay, it's my pleasure. So let's re review the AVAS track from the longitudinal view. And we can see at the distal of the LED, there is a relative large mass of ridge um, and uh, accommodate with the pullback of the hours, maybe there is a relative optimum landing zone of the landing, the distal tent. And uh, during the pullback, we can see there is some superficial cassie field laden. And, and there is a cassie of has a field nodule lead. And uh, the largest uh, cathode arc may be over 270 degree superficial cathode lead. But the, this patient has a relative large 
lumen diameter. So there is the ostium of the LED, and there is a, the patient's left main. That's all. Okay, you know, from the LS, I think in the distal parts of LED, there's male cardiac bridge. And after that, there's some calcification, but not that severe. And then when uh, we put back further uh, at the proximal part of RD, I think the calcification is very severe. So Dr. Gong, for this kind of lesion, what's your pretreatment strategy? Mm, yes, for this, uh, in, for this lesion, it's very um, complex because mm -hmm. of the short left moon, mm -hmm. the significant stenosis, and the severe calcification uh, especially in the autumn of uh, LED. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, for the for the living, we should uh, pre treatment of uh, uh, folly to to get uh, stent uh, optimal result. Uh, and uh, for the calcification living, uh, for this uh, living, for this patient, uh, firstly we will choose. Uh, intravascular uh, laser tripsy as the first uh, uh, tech, uh, threat, uh, strategy to pretreat uh, the calcification in the segment. And uh, after pretreatment, we will perform uh, intravascular imaging uh, to determine the pretreatment result uh, again. And uh, until the pretreatment is very optimal, then we will implant the stent. And after stent, after stent, we will perform a function assessment uh, to guide our uh, further uh, optimization te uh, technique or procedure uh, in order to uh, get uh, the best uh, uh, result and uh, the long time outcomes. Mm -hmm. So the intravascular lesion through tripsy is your option. But you know, I think from the hours at the ostrum of LED, the arc of calcification is not that big, maybe almost 180. But do you think you know, it's okay if we pre treat this lesion with cutting balloon or some? Balloon dedicates its techniques. Uh, uh, it has to be the AVL. Uh, cutting balloon is an alternative, alternative uh, uh, method. Uh, but uh, for this patient, uh, the uh, from the CT and the geography, we can see the and the intravascular image at uh, the degree of the calcification is very uh, heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the IVL maybe have a good uh, pretreatment result. Of course, cutting balloon is another uh, choice and uh, we will now we will perform intravascular imaging from the circle flex to confirm the morphology of the uh, of the digital left man and the after of LED. Mm -hmm. I think you know for calcified lesions, the imaging test can give us lots of important information. If just based on the uh, angiography, we make the wrong decision. So Ryan, we have the information from Alice, we have the information from the CT angiography, and then we can make the right decision. So uh, from the angio, the left mean is very short. So now you want to check the morphology of the left mean. One more Alice wrong from circumflex to left mean, right? Yes. Okay. We will, we will measure the MLA, the mineral lumen area of the optimum of 
of circle flex. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's mirror the MRA of the circle flex. It's 4.12 square millimeter. And uh, we can see from the 11 to maybe two o'clock there and uh, the five to six o'clock there have two superficial calcification, uh, calcification field nodule, which later is already protrusion into the lumen vessel. Yeah, and the ostrum of circumflex, there's also calcification. It could be calcified nodule. Yes. But the lumen area, I think, is big enough. It's over four points uh, millimeter square. Yes, because of the attenuate, uh, or take uh, shadowing attenuate uh, due to the catastrophic of the laser. So we can accurately mirror of the of vessel diameter. So we can see uh, the vessel profile is invisible. Mm -hmm. So what do I think of the results, Dr. Gong? Uh, from the result, <laughs> we think uh, I will uh, first uh, to the province of denting technique mm -hmm. because the MLA of circle flex often is larger than uh, four point zero, and uh, for this uh, setting, and the crossover technique may be suitable and acceptable. Uh, next step, we will perform another uh, imaging from the first diagonal branch to. Uh, evaluate the auto of the first diagram. Yeah, because the lesion is very diffused in the RD from the middle parts to the ostium. So I think probably you may put two stents and you have to run one more alas in the first diagonal to see if there's a big, or there's a severe stenosis at the ostium of the first diagonal. Yes. Bye. Dr. Zhang, you know, uh, actually Dr. Gong uh, did the pressure microcatheter FFR to confirm the results of the QFR. Because I mentioned earlier, this is a very new technique. It was invented by a Chinese uh, doctor. So what's the advantage of this new technique compared with the pressure wear? Oh, yes. The microcatheter-based FFR, that, that device is all, uh, totally invented uh, by our domestic scientist. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the most advantage of this device is this can deliver from the workhouse wire to the distal of the lesion. Mm -hmm. As we know, uh, the classic wire-based FFR has mm -hmm. the relative poor uh, uh, neurability of the pressure wire. But if we use the workhouse wire to the distal and uh, deliver the caster based on the prior wire, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, quite safer and easier. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to uh, advance the uh, microcatheter, you know, to go in and go out, right? Without any big complications. It's not like the pressure wear, which is very hard to manipulate it, right? Yes. And also I think for some complex lesions, like uh, torture lesions or some motor vessel lesions. And so maybe pressure wear may cause more complications. So this new technique, may be suitable for the complex lesions. Of course. And the good thing is, you know, if we uh, perform the pressure microcatheter, you know, after stenting, we can just keep the wear inside of the lumen. We don't have to rewear after stenting. This is also one of the advantages with the microcatheter. Yes. Uh, post stenting, we maybe need to reevaluate the post stenting FFR. Mm -hmm. 
and use the classic uh, uh, wire-based FFR, it's, uh, it's hard for us to uh, repeat uh, go in and go out mm -hmm. the wire mm -hmm. several times. But uh, the microcaster could resolve this problem easily. Yeah, but the only problem with the microcaster is profile is a little bit bigger than the pressure wear. So that could be a problem. If it's a very tight lesion, they may overestimate it, the stenosis severity. Yes. So right now, Dr. Gong is doing the AVAS in the first diagonal, right? Yes. So Dr. Zhang, can you take us through the AVAS? Okay, it's my pleasure. For the first diagonal, the lesion focused on the outer, and uh, we can see the black uh, burden is less than uh, fifteen percent, mm -hmm. and uh, is very uh, short. It about uh, is less than ten millimeter, and uh, this is a simple uh, bifurcation according to the criteria mm -hmm. proposed by. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chen Xiaoliang, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, the sand branch uh, will be protected uh, only, and, and uh, if after stenting the after of the first diagonal branch is occur in uh, is occluded by the a structure of stenting stent, and uh, we will perform piercing balloon uh, inflation and to uh, delete uh, delete the optimum uh, of the first uh, diagonal. Uh, next, we will perform pre dilation of the LED living mm -hmm. with AVL, right? Uh, uh, and Dr. Zhang, can you give me the LED imaging result again uh, for the uh, important uh, uh, measurement, for example, the lens, the M MLA, and the calcification degree? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's my pleasure. So with the AVAS image, and then you know you can choose the AVL based on the length and the arc of calcification, and also the lumen diameter, like what kind of AVL you may choose. So again, AVAS can provi provide us with a lot of important information. So I think maybe there, this site is our distal learning zone, yeah. and uh, the Lumen diameter is 2.73 and 2.97 millimeter, and the vessel diameter is over three uh, millimeter. And the mean, and the mean distal vessel diameter is about uh, 3.5, 3.5 millimeter. Yes. And uh, accompanied with the uh, pullback view, can uh, firstly we can identify some marker site. Maybe there is a... Uh, yes, the first, the first uh, diagonal. Yes, there is the first uh, diagonal. Mm. Sometime, sometimes we ch choose the first uh, stent uh, di uh, lungs, maybe consider about uh, the ostium of the first uh, diagonal. Okay. Next. Okay. Okay, next. There is the oh, bifurcation if, uh, between the LED and LCX. There is okay. the aorta ostium. So I think uh, the stenting strategy is to fully cover the lesion. Maybe the total length of the lesion is 54.11 uh, millimeter. And uh, the first stent, I think you could choose uh, in, in our medical center, we always considering 
the mean lumen diameter and uh, over 10 to uh, over 0 to 0 0.25 millimeter based on the mean lumen diameter plus that's parameters. I think maybe the 3.0 millimeter diameter stent is optimal. So yeah. based on the Avas image, Dr. Gong, what kind of, what size of AVL balloon you may choose? Uh, according to the diameter uh, examined or uh, measured by the intravascular imaging, uh, we will perform about uh, uh, three point uh, yes, three point zero mm -hmm. uh, uh, IVL balloon to uh, crack the calcification leaving. So over the past two weeks, uh, we have encountered uh, some other calcified lesions. And we all performed the AVL. I think the results, you know, the effects of the AVL on the calcification is very good. But let's see, you know, what's uh, it's going to show us uh, after the use in this patient. Okay. Um, as we know, preparation of AVL balloon is a key, is a key step mm -hmm. for the a good effect of uh, the balloon. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will uh, retreat uh, the, we will prepare the balloon uh, carefully. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, before the AVL, we have to make sure where is the good spot to do the AVL and then we can get a better results. Because right now, you know, with the advancements in the calcification treatment, especially the use of AVL, some doctors think, you know, the calcification is not a big problem anymore to the interventionalists. So what do you think of this opinion, you know? They think, you know, AVL can solve all kinds of calcified problems. Um. Uh, as we know, the uh, AVL, uh, after we mentioned, AVL, uh, the balloon, AVL balloon uh, retreatment is very uh, important for the all procedure of the AVL. Mm -hmm. uh, an, uh, an, another key point is the delivery of the balloon uh, for the significant uh, stenosis leaving. Uh, sometimes the balloon cannot be uh, delivered uh, across the leaving and uh, in this time the uh, predilation with semi uh, complaint balloon <laughs> is necessary. Mm -hmm. So still, the AVL is just one of the options for the treatments of calcification. Uh, sometimes we had to use uh, rotational atherectomy, some NC balloons or cutting balloons, scoring balloons. It really depends on the lesion. It's, it's very tight. We cannot deliver the uh, AVL balloon. We had to do the rotational atherectomy to make enough room, and then we can deliver the AVL. And sometimes we have to use, you know, uh, both RA, AVL, and also some balloon dedicated modification techniques. It's a combination. So it's not like AVL can solve all the problem. No, it's not like that. Uh, yes. Um, uh, for this patient, uh, just um, as we see in the imaging result from circle flex, and the after calcification of a circle flex is also uh, moderate to severe. Mm -hmm. So for the patient, uh, 
uh, we'll try the IVR pre-treatment of Circoflex optimal um, to minimal the risk of the occlusion of uh, circle flex after stenting from proximal segment to left main. Uh, and then may, I think this is a, 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 new, a, a, a new try on a, a good uh, attempt. Mm -hmm. So you want to treat the uh, osteum circumflex with the AVL first? Uh, no, I. Uh, mm. uh, ideally, then I will pre treatment mm. first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Later, give me later contrast. Because of the calcification at the ostrum of circumflex, so you are kind of worried that after you put a stand from the proximal RD to left mean, and there's a risk of the circumflex occurring, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we will uh, perform the RBL procedure. Mm -hmm. After we will inflate it to 4 ATM mm -hmm. and then we will uh, ready. Are you ready? So now we can shock. So, uh, press the button. Press that right. right. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's shocking. Yes. Okay, six ATM, mm -hmm. six ATM, and then deflate it. Mm -hmm. So after the shock, we increase the pressure to six ATM to see if the balloon is, uh, can be well expanded. If it can, that means the AVL works, right? Mm, yes, if uh, it mm -hmm. cannot be uh, inflated fully, mm -hmm. uh, we will perform another uh, a circle of uh, AVL. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an interesting uh, thing with the use of AVL. When we give the shock wave, because from the ESG monitoring, we could see some PVC, premature ventricular contraction. Do you think that's the problem we should uh, we should be worried about? Or it's all right? It's just a, a phenomenon we may observe when we use AVL. Uh, see? Uh, this Some PVC on the ESG monitoring, premature bits. No, I think it's uh, it's relatively simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's quite common, right? When we give the shock, because yes. we could see the premature bits on the ESG monitoring. Yes. But what if you know if this patient had the pacemaker implanted before? So before the use of AVR, should we uh, change the mode to a to a safer mode, or it's okay? We can just leave that. It won't cause any problem in patients with pacemaker implanted. I don't think a uh, the CG uh, check uh, prior the procedure mm -hmm. uh, has already tell us maybe it's uh, relative safer mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, of this patient. Mm -hmm. So we don't implant it to the pacemaker. And uh, during so, the mm -hmm. shock wave work there have some pvc i think it's common situation mm -hmm. and uh, i mean you know uh what if you know this patient's had pacemaker implanted before mm -hmm. but you know this patient's heart rate uh depends on the pacemaker but you know and then for this kind of patients when we want to use the avl should we worry about that oh. or it should be fine we don't have to worry about that oh i don't, I don't think I, I don't. Okay, it's, that, that's, a, that's a very good question, mm -hmm. but uh, in my experience, I think it's no need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I think because the basic mechanism of the IVL is 
transformer from the electrical energy to mechanical energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pulse uh, of the MLL is very, very short. Mm -hmm. uh, although there is a round of 10 times uh, energy pulse, I don't think this energy could uh, injury or cause some dysfunction of the pacemaker. Okay. So right now we give like four times of the shock wave. Yes. Do we check the imaging test? So we, you want to give more shock wave? Yes. Oh, one more time. You know, to me, the shock wave is kind of new. Before I thought, you know, when we use the shock wave, we should hear some sound like ta 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 ta. But actually, <laughs> there's no sound, right? It's kind of silent. Okay. In fact, uh, when we choose IVL as pre treatment strategy, mm -hmm it will significantly decrease the risk of uh, no reflow mm -hmm. or slow flow. Yeah, I agree with you. Compared mm -hmm. with the rotational atherectomy, the AVL is much safer. The risk of uh, no, flow, no reflow or slow flow is very, very low. Yeah. And also the learning curve for some new interventionists is very short. It's not like the rotational atherectomy. It takes a lot of time to get used to this kind of technique. But for AVL, it's very, very easy to master how to use this new technique. Yeah. I think the cost may be an issue uh, in our daily practice, right? Because right now it's not covered by the health insurance. I hope maybe with the increasing use of AVL, the cost will be decreased and then more patients can benefit from this new technique. Yes. Very good. Then I will perform AVL uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, for the local flex after leaving. You know, now this number on the shock wave monitor, you know, each time when we shock and then the number will be decreased, right? Yeah. Like 10 pulses each time. And then uh, one AVL balloon can be used like uh, eight times. Yes. Okay. You feel some resistance when you put back the AVL balloon? Yes. Okay. okay. So the Amazon RED or circumflex? So tell me you want to check the ostium of circumflex? Uh, next step, we will complete the AVL for the circumflex. Oh, or I see. Then we will perform. Oh. You still want to treat the ostium circumflex with AVL? Yes. Do uh, so you are still worry about the calcification at the ostium of the circumflex? Yes, although the plaque burden mm -hmm. or the MLA of the LCX is relatively mm -hmm. safe, but mm -hmm. like we can see at the ostium of LCX site, mm -hmm. there uh, almost uh, over 118 degree calcification, mm -hmm. superficial cancer field laden. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Gong choose AVL. You know, that is also one of the good points of AVL because because of SAFE, it doesn't cause any big complications. That's why we are very confident to use AVL at the ostium circumflex. 
But if the calcification is very severe at the ostium of circumflex, you know, when we try to use a uh, rotational atherectomy, we may worry about the complications, right? Yes, certainly. Yeah. So for the ostium circumflex, what can what size of AVL balloon would you choose? Uh, the same, the same uh -huh. AVL balloon. Three O. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, this balloon cannot achieve, cannot get the location, mm -hmm. and cannot cross the vein, as we see. Yeah, maybe the osteosynclax, uh, there's a very tight lesion. And then you will pre-treat with some other balloon, so you may decrease the size of AVR balloon. Oh no. Mm, in fact, uh, the AVR for the uh, circleflex after leaving is just a protect, just a protect technique uh, for for decreasing the risk yield by the LED stent. Uh, if the IVR cannot cross the living, mm -hmm. I will not uh, uh, try the IVR at the off term of the cool flex. Mm -hmm. Just and leave it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will perform the I must to check or to determine the pretreatment result of LED living. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, Dr. Zhang are going to take us through the AVAS results. We are very curious what's the results uh, after the use of AVL in this kind of calcified lesion. Yes, yeah, so the post uh, IVI check of the AVL is very important. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. So actually, you know, for the uh, calcified lesions, uh, we have two options in terms of the imaging modalities, OCT and AVAS. And some doctors do prefer to use AVAS and some doctors do prefer to use uh, OCT. So it, it really depends on the personal preference. So I think Dr. Gung prefers to use AVAS. Yes, uh, because uh, the stent um, will be implanted into left main mm -hmm. and for this uh, for this um, casing, mm -hmm. I think uh, I was the optimal choice. Mm. Yeah, right. Because the left mean the diameter is much bigger, so Avas is a better uh, imaging modality. Yes. OCT, yeah. Mm -hmm. 